Okay guys, so this is the application Maya and I'm in Maya 2013 right now and if you've opened up Maya for the first time this is what you can expect to see. So the very first thing you see is this uh, little helper guide here that just gives you a couple of pointers about how to use the program. Uh, you can read this if you want or you can just close it. Um, you can tell it not to open again by clicking that. So uh, here's what we've got. So if this is the very first time you've opened Maya or the first time you've worked in a 3D application, you might be a little intimidated by all the menus you see and the you know, kind of um, perhaps not so familiar interface with uh, the 3D scene as it is here. Uh, but don't worry, we're going to go through all this stuff uh, one at a time. And definitely don't feel like you have to remember everything at the very you know, the first time through, because it is a lot to remember, and it won't be intuitive to you for a while. Um, I remember when I was learning how to use this program, there was absolutely a period where I did not feel comfortable, <laughs> I'm not even sure how long, but, you know, for months, um, I would, you know, I have to learn, and it takes a lot of time to, to really feel comfortable. So, uh, don't feel like this is the one-time shot. You can always go back and rewatch these videos, and and reabsorb the information if you want to. So um, having said that, let's just go forward. So the first thing you see here is uh, a 3D canvas, if you will. And what we're looking down on is this little grid here. It's just a, a visual representation and it uh, just gives us a sense of 3D space. So if you hold down the Alt button on your keyboard and the left mouse button on your mouse at the same time and then begin to move the mouse around, you can see that your cursor is turned into this little thing with arrows. See that? And what it's allowing you to do is it's allowing you to kind of rotate around the canvas like this. So we can rotate it all the way around. You don't have to hold it down continuously, but you can kind of do little drags if you want to move around this way. Now if you hold down Alt again and the left mouse button and the middle mouse button, which on your mouse might actually be a middle mouse button or it might be the uh, wheel. If you push the wheel down, or actually, uh, I'm sorry, if you just hold down the alt button and the middle mouse button, it will allow you to pan across like this. So you can see we've got these directional arrows now for a cursor and we're no longer rotating but we're actually moving around like this. And the last thing is if you hold down the alt button left mouse button and middle mouse button, it allows you to zoom in and out like this. So we can now get closer to things and we can get farther away from things. Um, now let me make a note right away. We're not actually making this grid move around. We're not making it rotate and we're not making it scale up and down. But we, the viewer, are actually moving around in this 3D space. So it's kind of a tricky thing to think about. but. Uh, this is like a ground that's immovable. It never moves, actually. And we just move around it like this. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, if you practice this, you'll get really quick with it, and moving around in a 3D scene will become very intuitive and very quick. Um, it may take a little while for you, but again, there's no rush. Um, take your time in learning this stuff and really try to feel comfortable with it before moving on to the next step. Um, also, if you use the mouse wheel, and just scroll it up and down like you were scrolling on a web page, it will zoom in and out for you as well. Um, but it will work at increments. So you can see that as I move it up, it's moving forward by discrete units, whereas, uh, like we had before, I can actually move around uh, seamlessly. So just to expand a little bit more about what this space is and where it is, um, you can kind of consider this to be like the universe. Um, if we look up, uh, and you can tell what direction you're look, looking through uh, in two ways. You can look at this cube we have on the right here. You can see that we're now looking at the bottom, so we're looking up through the floor. There's also a little navigational thing here down at the bottom. We've got the uh, y-axis pointing straight up, the x-axis going left to right, and it's kind of hard to see, but the z-axis going uh, from front to back. So X, Y, Z, those are the three coordinates we need to worry about. Normally if you were working in 2D you'd only worry about X and Y, 
but because we're working in a 3D program, we've got those three coordinates we need to be conscious of. Um, but anyway, as regards this space that we're in, there's no ceiling and there's no floor. Uh, there's no walls on either side. So it really is just an infinity of space. And you could theoretically just go forever, uh, or at least until your computer ran out of memory. Um, so we're always working in this paradigm of a scene, and that's what this is. It's a Maya scene. Um, everything we create in this scene uh, is in the Maya world. Um, it's kind of hard to describe, but well, you'll see later when we begin saving things out. But we can save this scene, and what it will do is it will basically save everything that's inside the Maya scene. It's not going to save the grid, or it's not going to worry about saving empty space or anything like that. Uh, but that's basically what a scene is. So I'd like to talk a little bit about the user interface and uh, what all this stuff is. Um, a lot of it may not be so relevant to you until we actually begin working, but um, I'm going to go over them anyway, and we can just talk about what they are um, and, uh, and what they'll be used for later on down the road. So one of the cool things about Maya is that you can, again, customize it in a lot of different ways, and we'll get into that too. But because of that, there are oftentimes situations where you can do things in more than one way. So a lot of these menus can be accessed by going to the hotbox. So if you hit the space bar, it opens up this little dialog box. And you may notice that there are a couple things that are the same here. at the file menu here and the file menu here. So if I click open the file menu, we see a lot of options that a lot of programs with file menus typically have. You know, new scene, open scene, save scene, etc. In the hotbox, it's the same thing. New scene, open scene, save scene. And so you may wonder, well, like, well, why do we have this menu that comes up versus this menu over here? And again, it's just for that ease of use convenience that one person may prefer moving up to the menus up here. One person may prefer just using the hotbox down here like this. So again, you bring up that menu by holding down the spacebar. Keep it held down, and then you can go to all these menus here. Um, let me back up real quick and just talk about something um, that I forgot to mention. So I mentioned that we're moving around in the scene here, and you may be wondering, well, what is what is actually moving around, you know, the viewer, but is there any representation of that? And the answer is yes. So I'm going to quickly jump to a different camera. If you tap the spacebar, it opens up this quad view. And if you tap it again in the menu, uh, the window we were just in, it goes back. So Maya has four cameras by default. It's got this perspective camera, which you can tell because it says uh, persp down here at the bottom. And then we also have a top camera, a front camera, and a side camera. And as you may have guessed, these cameras are locked off in those directions. So the top camera is always looking down on the scene. The front camera is always looking from the front and the side from the side. So let's just go to the top camera. And you'll notice that I can't rotate anymore. I'm actually holding down the left mouse button and the alt key. And it's not letting me rotate at all. In fact, it's telling me that I can't. Same thing from the front window here. So if we go to the front, uh, same thing here. So what I would like to do is show you the perspective camera. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new camera. Uh, don't worry about what I'm doing right now. We'll get into this later. but. This is essentially what we're looking through. We've got this little icon of a camera in your 3D scene. Now this is nothing that could ever be rendered. It's just a visual for us. And if we want to, we could start using this camera. Uh, by selecting the camera, going to Panels, and saying Look Through Selected. And so now we're looking through that camera, and I can rotate it around just like I was with the perspective camera. And I can jump back to the perspective by holding down the spacebar 
and clicking on the Maya box in the middle here and going to Perspective. So you notice that we did rotate that camera around a little bit and there it is with its new location. So just to be aware, you know, we're working in a 3D scene with cameras. And these are also the same cameras, by the way, that would end up being used in a final production. So if you're working on an animated movie like Toy Story, for example, uh, you're going to have these cameras all over the scenes uh, and every shot. And uh, it has all the attributes that you would need with a real camera.